you can't have an astronomy class without discussing properties about telescopes. So a little bit of a historical perspective. They were first invented in the 17th century. Some sources will falsely credit it to Galileo, but it was actually Hans Liebersche who had first patented a telescope. What Galileo did was perfect the techniques. He worked on techniques to make nice lenses here. The smoother your lenses are, the better your optical resolution you're going to get. So Galileo gets a lot of credit throughout history of creating the best telescopes of his time and making all the great observations that expanded our understanding of the universe. And we're going to talk about two types of telescopes, reflecting and refracting telescopes. Catch the theme from our last video here. So with that, let's go dive in and talk about the properties of telescopes. A schematic version of our telescope can be broken down to the objective lens, eyepiece, aperture, and will sh shortly soon show the focal length. So the objective lens is just the primary lens of the telescope. That's going to take light coming in and focus it down so that your eye can resolve the image better. Now this aperture, the aperture is the effective power of your telescope. The bigger your aperture, the more you're going to be able to see. So how in this basic example, this uh, telescope is composed of a converging lens. Rays are going to come in, pass through a focus. This focus corresponds to the objective lens. And now you need to take this bent image and correct it so that you can see the image nice and clear instead of having a blurry thing. And so the eyepiece will take this crisscrossed image and pass it out towards your eye to see. Turns out that if you can build the focus of this, you play with the distances of this eyepiece to where this focus is, you'll get this nice uh, resolution of the image here. So where you hover your eye to see the uh, resulting image, this total length here will be the focal length of the telescope. Notice, it's not the length of the telescope. Any of you who have experience using telescopes or microscopes, you'll remember that awkward sensation of hovering your eye above the object. You can't just place your face right on top of your microscope. You have to hover a little bit and find where that focal length is to really see the image. Taking our simple telescope, let's ask, what would you see when you look at this triangle here? Specifically, if you look at the marked red tip through the telescope, where's the red tip going to be? Go ahead and pause the video, come up with your answer, and come right back. What I'm going to do to solve this problem is I'm going to color code the top and the bottom of this triangle here. We'll use red and blue. And remember, this is a converging lens. These rays are going to pass through the aperture and get focus. So they'll crisscross through the focal point. The eyepiece here just changes the directories again so that they're nice and parallel and you can see a nice clear image. And you'll notice that the blue rays, the top of the triangle, are now up top. And we have flipped this triangle upside down. Bringing down our model telescope even further. Here's my uh, focus, my objective lens. There's the corresponding focal length. And then you can have your eyepiece. Your eyepiece will have its own corresponding focal lengths. And you can toy with your telescope by changing the relative distances between these type of foci. And if you ever play with a telescope, notice how you can extend or retract. You're changing where the focus of your image is. Some of the terms we need to find here, what's the resolution? Well, it's the smallest thing that you can resolve, right? How far apart can things be? And you'll still be able to distinguish them, right? Part of what's going to determine what we can see is based on the diffraction, this uh, blurring of the image. And we'll formally define this diffraction limit in the next slide, but we'll tell you that it's this ratio of the type of light, the wavelength of light coming in, versus that telescope's aperture. So the fraction limit puts a cap 
What is the smallest thing that you can resolve? And that diffraction limit is a property of basically the dimensions of your telescope. And the last one, the ones that will most colloquially associate telescope, it's just the magnification. Formal definition, it's the telescope's focal length, which, if you recall, would be this length. It's the telescope's focal length over the eyepiece's focal length. And that just creates how big of an image you're going to magnify. So this little point that will come up uh, again and again later on. You want the best magnification? Well, you want the longest focal length. The longer this is, the longer this thing gets, the greater magnification you're going to have, the bigger you'll be able to see something. Letting theta represent the resolution, the smallest objects that we can resolve. I'll say that the resolution due to the diffraction limit, the upper limit of what we can see, is uh, a product of this constant and the ratio of the wavelength of light that we're seeing divided by the aperture size. This constant gets all these angles into arc seconds, nice tiny angles. One arc second is one three thousand six hundred of a degree. To put this in perspective, Kepler, when he was trying to argue a heliocentric model, he needed uh, measurements on the order of milli arc seconds to try and resolve the orbit of the Earth, to try and actually prove conclusively that the Earth was the, uh, not the center of the solar system, but the Sun was. So an arc second is a very tiny angular measurement. Go ahead and apply this, equa this equation we just studied. Let's say I have a telescope out and I want to study a star and it's just outside my ability to resolve. I can just make out the star, but it's fuzzy. So, being a star, I'm going to go buy a new telescope or get some grant money. What am I looking for in my new telescope? Am I looking for a larger or a smaller aperture size. Well, if you write down that equation, this is a straightforward one. Remember, the D in this equation represents the size of the telescope, that aperture size. And so if I get a larger aperture size, what happens to this? As this diameter, this aperture gets bigger, theta gets smaller. Well, that's good for us. A smaller theta means that I can see smaller things. I can see things that are smaller and smaller in the night sky. So the bigger my telescope gets, the smaller my resolution is. That means the smaller the thing has to be for me to see it. Let's keep using this uh, diffraction limit equation, and let's see how good the first telescope is, our eyeballs. If you look at the pupil of your eye, the pupil, well, that'll be our aperture size. And in an average human being, it's about 4 millimeters. Now, with this aperture equation, I do need to specify a wavelength that comes in, because that will determine, well, how well you can see that. So, for these examples, I'm going to use green rays, about 5.5 nanometers. Or 550 nanometers is what I mean to say. So, with that... Let's uh, plug these in. All right, constant 2.06, 10 to the fifth. Our wavelength is 5.5 to the minus seventh meters, and the aperture size of our human eyeball is that four millimeters, 0 0.004 meters. Get that in arc seconds. Plug and chug in your calculator, and you'll find the resolution that a human eye can resolve is 28.3 arc seconds. Slight variance if you change the wavelength, but it's in this order. It's on the order of 30 arc seconds for a human eyeball. And that's, that's about the range that we can do. So let's upgrade. Let's go to say something like the Hubble telescope. A lot of the big beautiful images that we've seen over the last few years from the universe have all come from Hubble, this wonderful device. Now Hubble's aperture size isn't 4 millimeters, it's 2.4 meters. So with that, going back to our calculation, 
the resolution or the diffraction limit of Hubble is on the order of 0.047 arc seconds, which is about 600 times better than our eyeballs can see. And that's, that's this recurring theme here. You get a bigger aperture, you'll be able to see smaller things. You'll be able to resolve more things in the universe. Before we continue on our discussion, we do have to remind ourselves about the laws of physics and how they're always, always messing up with our images. In this picture, we've got the CD and lights coming in, and you're seeing these refracted colors. Well, think back to when we did the double slit experiments in a previous section. We sent nice plane waves in, gave them a little gap to pass through, and that created the sequence of this interference patterns. Well, turns out the same thing can happen on reflections. Instead of passing through two gaps, you're reflecting off of a surface, and it's not perfectly smooth, and the ridges, the slight bumps, the fuzziness on the surface of that material will cause a dispersion in the colors. Specifically, dispersion is due to that constructive and destructive interference. <laughs> 